be what you remember about lines. Okay? So let's start easy, and let's just say I gave you y equals, oh, let's go 1 third x minus 7, and then let's go y equals 0.4, oh, that's horrible. Let's try that again. A negative 0.4x plus 3. Graph those, please. So this one, you understand if y is by, number one, I know both of these are lines. Besides the fact that I told you they were both lines, how else would you know that they're a line? How would you know, Bryce? Y equals x squared plus x minus 6. That's not a line. Okay? How do I know that these two both are lines? How do I know they're both linear? If the biggest exponent, if the only exponents are 1, then it's a line. Even though you can't see it, what's this exponent? A 1. What's this exponent? A 1. Then it's got to be a line, no matter what. As soon as you start changing the exponents, you change the shape of the graph. Okay? Absolutely. So, I know it's linear. I know y is by itself, which means that it's in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept form. So the number in front of the x is your slope. So what's my slope? My slope is one-third. And for slope, which we always use the letter m for slope, slope is the same thing as what? Rise over run. So if I looked at one-third, if, it's, if the top is positive, it means go up. If the bottom's positive, it means go to the right. So this, the number without the x, is always where it crosses the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it crosses at a negative 7. And then I can go up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3. But my challenge to you is, Isn't a negative 1 over a negative 3 still a positive 1 third? What's a negative divided by a negative? A positive. So instead of going up 1 over 3, I could go down 1 into the left 3. And isn't that still on the line? Yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay? Now, if you want to put in your note cards, I'll put this over here. If you want to put, you know, slope-intercept form, because you're going to learn a couple of forms for lines, y equals mx plus b. If you want to put slope, which is, which we use m, which is m is equal to rise over run. If you want to put that in your note cards, go ahead. Let me erase this. What if I didn't? Okay. If I didn't know if I had y equals one third x subtract seven, if I didn't remember the shortcut to graphing lines, I could have made an xy table. And what what numbers do I plug in to, for my x? Any of these numbers? What numbers do I plug in? Does it matter? Could I plug in a negative million if I wanted to? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay, you can pick whatever your little heart desires. Now, I am going to hope, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, is the problem with common sense is that it's, it's not very common anymore. If I'm looking at this as my slope, what type of numbers am I going to want to plug in for x? Thank you. Why? I'm going to, yeah, Lord knows I don't want to put a, a five there because then I'm going to go one third 
times five subtract seven. Well, that's gonna give you one third times five is five thirds subtract seven. Well, then you gotta have a common denominator and then you gotta do all that garbage. Makes no sense, why would I do that? Okay, I would much rather pick multiples of three. So if I picked a three, then I could go, oh, one third times three. Well, what's one third of three? What's well, one third of three? What's one third times three? One. One over three times three over one is just three over three, which is? So one subtract seven would be a negative six. So if I went over three, down six, hey, lo and behold, there we go. Okay, so just a trick that you need to remember. If I had like two, well, speak of the devil, we'll do the next one here in just a second. Let's look at the next one. First of all, I'm praying that not very many of you went, oh, it crosses at three, and if my slope is a negative 0.4, I'm going to go down a negative 0.4 over 1, down a negative 0.4 over 1, down a negative 0.4 over 1. Down. Please tell me we didn't do that. I'm not even going to make you raise your hand if you did do it. I won't embarrass you. Because I would hope that we have enough mathematical sense to realize that a negative 0.4, number one, that's not how we really should read 0.4, right? What is that? How do I read that? 0.4 is really what? Four what? Four tenths. Four tenths. So really, this is y equals a negative 4 over 10x plus 3. And then 4 over 10 can do what? Simplify to what? Two-fifths. So really, I'm at y equals a negative two-fifths x plus 3. So it crosses at three. So here we go again. A negative two-fifths. I could write it that way or I could write it that way. So I either can go down two to the right five. Down two, one, two, three, four, five. Or I could go up two and to the left five. Either one is still on my... How many of you got both of those correct? Okay, well, good. Let's try this then. Let's say I gave you, I'm going to come back to that. Let's say I gave you, oh, uh, let's go a negative 13x plus 26y equals 39. Graph that, please. But first, what are the biggest exponents for your x and your y? What are the exponents? What's my exponent here, and what's my exponent here? So if they're both 1s, what does this graph have to be? It has to be a line. So you know this is linear. Okay? Graph that, please. Okay? I promise you this is a very easy line to graph. It's hard to read a moving target.
Here we go. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. Okay. So the first one, ooh, that's going to be a long last I'm still recording. My bad. Is to get y by itself. So I could add 26x, and I could add 26x, and that gives me 13y equals. These are not like terms, so I can't add them together, so I just have to keep them like this. And then I could divide by 13 and divide by 13 and divide by 13. So y equals 26 divided by 13 is just 2. Plus 39 divided by 13 is just 3. And there's your line that you could graph. Okay. The other way you could have done this, and I'm going to rewrite this over here, 26x, negative 26x, plus 13y equals 39. Okay, again, common sense. If I wanted to know, just looking at this problem, if I wanted to know my y-intercept, focus here, what's the x value on every single y-intercept in the world? Zero. If I'm graphing something, a y-intercept means that it has to be on the y-axis, correct? If I looked at all of those points, the one thing they have in common is what's my x value on all of them? Zero. You agree with that? You're going over zero, up or down, whatever. So if I wanted to know my y-intercept, what could I plug in for x? Zero. So a negative 26 times 0 is just 0. So that leaves me with 13y equals 39. Divide by 13, divide by 13, and I would get y is equal to 3. Hey, there's my y-intercept, 0, 3. And then any guesses to what my y, value, my y value would be to find my x-intercept? If I want to find any point on the x-axis, what's my y value going to be? Zero. So if I plug zero in for y, I would have a negative 26x. 13 times zero is zero, so that just gives me equals 39. Divide by a negative 26, divide by a negative 26. So x is equal to, well, 13 goes in here three times, 13 goes in here twice. So it'd be a negative 3 over 2, which is just a negative 1.5. And there's your line. Another way of doing that, okay? Just so you know. All right, let's do this. I'm going to give you two points. I'm going to give you, we'll start easy. Let's go negative 6, 3, and let's go 2, Let's go seven. I want you to come up with an equation for a line that goes through those two points. Equation for a line that goes through those two points. How many of you got this just by graphing? Okay. So just so you know, I'm not going to make them that easy for you anymore. Okay. So here's what you know so far. Okay. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Okay. I could go y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to tell you why that's not my favorite way. 
Okay. Well, one, I could find the slope. So we could go back over here, and my formula for slope is, and you can write this in your note cards, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. I could find the slope. So my slope is, does it matter which one's y1 or which one's y2, really? No. Just be consistent. If I'm going to put this first and put 7 subtract 3, y minus y, then I need to put this first and go 2 subtract a negative 6, which would be 4 over minus a negative means add, so 4 over 8, which is what? Now, now I have y equals 1 half times x plus b. We're halfway done. Okay. The issue is, is I, have, I still have three variables there. I need to find out what b is. I need to know my y-intercept, right? So do I, that means I need to get rid of these two variables at some point in time. Well, don't I have an X and a Y and an X and a Y? Does it matter which point I use? Doesn't the line go through both points? So I'll use this one. So I'm going to plug this in for Y. One half, plug two in for X. So I get seven equals, what's half of two? One, one plus B. And I could subtract 1, and I could subtract 1, and I get b equals 6. And here's the issue I have with this doing it this way. You'd be amazed on a test or a quiz how many times the directions say, write the equation for the line, and this is what I get for an answer. Did you answer the question? No. The answer is y equals 1 half x plus 6. That's the answer. Here's what I would rather you do, and I'll, there's another reason for it in just a second. We're going to talk about point-slope form, and it may seem longer, but it'll pay off in advanced math later on. It is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay. Okay, so negative 6, 3, 2, 7. So I have a negative 6, 3, 2, 7. And I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And for the sake of time, we've already found the slope, right? What's the slope? Was 1 half, right? So now I have y minus y1 equals 1 half times x minus x1. And again, does it matter which one of these I call x1 and y1? No. doesn't matter which point you use. Okay? So this time I'll use this point. So I'm going to plug the 3, which is my y value, okay? I'm going to plug it in for here. So now I have y subtract 3 equals 1 half times x subtract a negative 6. There's my subtract a negative 6. And subtract a negative means add, correct? So now I'm going to go y subtract 3 equals, I'm going to do the distributive property, 1 half times x is 1 half x. And 1 half of a positive 6 is a positive 3. And then I'm going to add 3, and I'm going to add 3 to get y by itself, and I get y equals 1 half x plus 6. Now, one of the reasons why I like this formula is because you can't help but end up with the equation when you're done. You're no longer giving me this as your answer because it, come, ooh, it comes out in, in point-slope form, right? The other reason why I like it is because in advanced math, I won't make you do it this year, but maybe the year after, maybe next year, 
we're no longer just going to have easy slopes. When we start doing trig, you could have a slope of pi. Or our slope could be sine of theta. When we start getting into trig. Okay? So you very easily could have, if we're talking about radians, we could have like y minus pi over 3 is equal to the sine of theta x plus 2 pi over 3. And that's as far as you'd want to go with that. That's as far as I, I'd, I'd want you to go. Okay. You do not want to try and take that into y equals mx plus b form. And so it's good to get used to doing this right now because I know we're going to be applying it later on with more advanced stuff. Does that make sense? That's why it's important to be able to do that. Okay. So let me give you one more, and then I'll give you some problems for homework today. So let's not make it so easy. So no graphing, but I'm not going to make it so you can graph that. Well, yeah. Let's go negative 13. We'll make it a little uglier. 7. Let's go to... Uh, 2. Okay. Okay, my slope. y minus y. This time I'll just go this way. So 7 subtract 2. y minus y over x minus x. So a negative 13 subtract 2 which would be 5 over a negative 15, which is a negative 1 third. So now I have y minus y1 equals a negative 1 third times x minus x1. This looks like it'll be better than using that. Okay, so that's my y1. So y subtract 2 equals a negative one-third times x subtract 2. So y subtract 2 equals a negative one-third times x is a negative one-third x. A negative times a negative is a positive, and one-third times 2 over 1 would just be two-thirds. And then I'm going to add 2, and I'm going to add 2. y equals a negative 1 third x plus, well, what's 2 plus 2 thirds? 2 plus 2 thirds is just 2 and 2 thirds, right? But in advanced math, we don't use mixed fractions very much. What would this be as an improper fraction? 8 thirds. How many of you got it correct? Okay. All right, here we go. Only like five homework problems. Number one, let's go, I don't care, negative 13, 5, a negative 5, and let's go 0, negative 1. Let's go... Mm, negative 1, negative 3, and let's go 2, 6, let's go oh, negative 21, positive 7, Let's go positive three. Nineteen, maybe. No, these are going to be real pretty. 
let's go. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Should we have some fun? I think so. Let's go a negative three fourths, a positive one half with, let's go, a positive one half and a negative, let's go and yeah. Positive one half and a negative three fourths. Nope. I don't want to make it that easy. That'd be too easy. Let's make it a negative five fourths. And just to see what you remember, if I give you, oh, let's go. 4x plus 2y equals 1,917. And I'm going to give you the point. Let's go negative 6, negative 20. Here's what I want, because I want to see if you remember. I want the equation for a line that goes through this point but is parallel to this line. Has to be parallel to this, but go through this point. I'm gonna tap and see what you remember from last year. Okay. 